After Julius Caesar died, the Roman civil wars led by Octavian and Mark Antony had a big effect on Rome's history. They led to the creation of an emperor-led government, which put an end to the Roman Republic for good. In today's video, we will look at the beginning of that war. In March 44 BC, a large group of senators chose to kill Julius Caesar, who was the dictator of the Roman Republic at the time. They did this because they feared the end of the Republic and were jealous of how much power he had. Caesar would die alone and beaten on the cold floor of the Senate after being stabbed many times and even tricked by his godson Brutus. But the people who tried to kill Caesar didn't know that he had a son named Gaius Octavian. Under Roman law, Caesar didn't have any real live children, so he adopted Octavian, who was his great nephew, and made him his main heir. When Caesar died, Octavian was in the Roman region of Illyria, northwest of the Balkans, where he was learning and getting military training in the city of Apollonia. His response, according to historians, was a mix of sadness and skepticism. It was hard to believe that a man as strong and intimidating as Caesar could be beaten and misled in such a humiliating way. After this happened, some military leaders told him to take his troops and hide in Macedonia because they were afraid that Caesar's killers would come after him. Octavian, on the other hand, would not act like a wimp. He didn't run away. Instead, he sailed towards Italy. After arriving in Lecce, Octavian learned what was in Caesar's will. He chose to honor Caesar's memory by taking over two-thirds of his lands and becoming his political heir. After that, Octavian changed his name to Gaius Julius Caesar, which was the name of his great uncle. Roman citizens who were taken in by new family usually kept the form of their old name, called a cognomen, even though they received a new name. But now, things started to get out of hand. Octavian couldn't get to the top of the Roman political order with just his small amount of money, so he had to think freely. After Caesar's forces gave Octavian a warm welcome at Brundisium, he asked for a share of the money that Caesar had set aside for a planned war against a Parthian empire in the Middle East. This was worth 700 sesterces, which were kept at Brindisi, an area in Italy where military actions in the east were planned. Later, in 44 BC, Octavian made another bold move when, without permission from the government, he took the yearly payment from the new eastern province of Rome that was sent to Italy. Octavian started to strengthen his own army by adding Caesar's experienced legionnaires and troops sent to the Parthian War. He did this by stressing that he was Caesar's heir. On his way to Rome, Octavian marched through Italy. His presence and newly gained money drew a lot of people, including Caesar's old soldiers stationed in Campania. In June, he put together an army of 3,000 loyal soldiers and each gave them 500 denarii as pay. When Octavian got to Rome on May the 6th, 44 BC, Caesar's old partner, the consul Mark Antony, was in an uncomfortable truce with the people who killed the general. On March the 17th, they were given a general pardon, but Antony's angry speech at Caesar's funeral drove most of them out of Rome and made people hate the people who killed the general even more. Mark Antony was gaining political support, but Octavian still had a chance to beat him and become the leader of the group of people who backed Caesar. Antony lost the backing of a lot of Romans and people who liked Caesar when he first voted against making Caesar a god. During the summer, he won the support of Caesar's followers and got close to Caesar's old enemies, the Optimates, who saw him as the lesser of two evils and hoped to control him. In September, Marcus Tullius Cicero, who was the best speaker in the Senate, started making statements against Caesar in which he said that Antony was a threat to Republican order. Mark Antony was having a tough time. People were starting to dislike him more and, to make things worse, his year as consul was ending. Antony tried to make laws that would give him the region of Cisalpine Gaul. He did this to protect himself and keep some of his power. In the meantime, Octavian put together a private army in Italy by recruiting soldiers of Caesar's army. On November the 28th, he used a very generous cash offer to win over two of Antony's troops. Antony saw that living in Rome was dangerous because of Octavian's great and skilled strength. 
To the satisfaction of the Senate, he left Rome for Cisalpine Gaul, which was to be given to him on January the 1st. But the province had already been given to one of Caesar's killers, Brutus, who didn't accept the Senate's plans to stop the battle. This Senate, which was getting weaker, didn't have an army to back up its decisions. It gave Octavian a chance, since it was already known that he was in charge of a considerable amount of troops. Cicero defended Octavian in the Senate when Antony made fun of him for not being from a royal family. He even said that Rome had no better example of traditional piety among young people than Octavian. On January the 1st, 43 BC, the Senate made Octavian a senator because of Cicero's urging. Octavian was given Imperium Pro Praetore, power of command, which made his command of troops legal, making it possible for him to be sent to relieve the siege together with Aulus Hirtius and Gaius Vipius Pansa Citronianus, who were the consuls of the Roman Republic in the year 43 BC. He began working on January the 7th, which he would later remember as the start of his public job. The end was sad for both Hirtius and Pansa, who were consuls. Both died. But for Octavian, it was a glorious end. Antony's forces lost both the Battle of Forum Gallorum on April the 14th and the Battle of Mutina on April the 21st. This made Antony withdraw to Transalpine Gaul. This was his first big win, and it gave the young man a taste of the fame he wanted. But once he had tasted the win, he wouldn't be able to stop. The young Octavian still had to face many challenges and enemies to become the leader of Rome and get revenge for Julius Caesar. But that will be a story for a video to come. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and tell your friends about the videos. We'll see each other in the next video.